Okay, guys, I literally just did like, I have hair on my camera. I literally just did a little small word. But as I was listening to this prophetic word, and I, Jesus, I wish I had my word with me, but Lord, speak through me, please. Um, As I was listening to this prophetic word, like it got to the end, and I felt like I was kind of getting revelation on what God is doing in my life, right? Not even just my life, but it could be just your life too. This is not just for me. This is for so many people. And I'm trying to do my, my, um, mascara and, uh, record at the same time without like poking my eyeball out. So I mentioned in the previous word that the Lord had been highlighting my name. He had been hiding. He had been highlighting my name. Like everywhere, like I'm telling you, like members would have my name. I would have, I would get a transfer from like another department. They would have my name. The license plate last night would have my name. Like Ange, like, Ange, like what are you saying, Lord? And then he brought back to me, like, and I still have it in my suitcase. I went to this hair salon like years ago back in Texas and I, I had, I don't remember if I gave them my name, guys. I don't remember. And if I did give them my name, it was, I think Angelina I put. I can't really recall. But I got this little coupon in the mail. And it said, Angie, Angie. So I was like, that is so crazy, Lord. I never gave them my name. I probably didn't give them my name because I was like, how do they know my name? But Jesus knows everything, knows all. He knows us from the freaking top of our heads to the bottom of our feet even if guys like he knows the amount of hairs that are in our head like he knows the amount of hairs that are in my eyebrows in your eyebrows in your eyelashes like he knows everything so um I always it always takes me back to like when I believe Moses met Jesus or met God the father at the bush you know the burning bush and I believe I if I could be wrong forgive me if I'm wrong but he said, Moses, Moses, you know? And so every time I see my name twice, Holy Spirit, every time I see my name twice, it's like Angie, Angie. And I think about Moses, Moses. But anyways, I'm listening to this word. Oh, Holy Spirit. And um, she was talking about what the Lord is doing in so many people's lives right now. Like we have been, and she gave a song by Patti LaBelle. And I think it's called New Attitude. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's on your attitude. You can Google it, look it up for yourself and listen to it because it literally spoke so many volumes. And I believe it's, I'm paraphrasing, but it talks about how, um, how she was, you know, uh, look, it's, look at this spiritually. Okay. Like she was talking about how she was before she met Jesus, how she was like in sin, out of sin, doing all the things, all the things like in the world, whatever. But then she met Jesus, right? I'm paraphrasing this. It doesn't talk about Jesus, but if you hear spiritually, come on now. Use your spiritual ears. So now the Lord has given her a new attitude. So with who Jesus, with all of the tests that we have gone through, all the trials, all the like everything, God's been testing my faith in a way that He has never done it before. If that makes any sense at all. And so I felt like, um, recently what just happened like with me like doing the deposit like with with the um with the apartment and then staying at my job for overnight like literally god was like literally i can't even explain he was telling me what to do how to do it whatever the case i'm following his lead and it didn't make sense to me but he and like i said this yesterday he was literally testing my faith right so i'm all over the place um hold on um, so, hold on, I don't want to poke my eye out. What I got from this, because if you go back in the book of, I think it's Exodus, where the children, the Israelites, they were wandering in the, around the wilderness for 40 years, right? When it should have just been like a seven day, or not even a, I think it was like a 11 day journey, but they were disobedient. So they were just like 40 years, guys, is a long time. So they were in slavery. The Lord ended up freeing them. And I think even after the Lord parted the Red Sea, like, I might be wrong, but they were just like, 
let's just go backwards. Like, let's just go back. Let's just go back and die. I could be wrong. Do not, like, forgive me, guys, because I don't have that word with me. So <laughs> I was like, what I was getting from it, I know I'm all over the place. Because it's like, you know how you hear it in your head and you, like, hear it in your spirit, but, like, you're trying to get out and it doesn't come out the way that you want it to? That's exactly what's happening right now. So what I got from it was, like, The Lord has saved us from so much, like, guys, he has saved us because he's so good. No spam risk. I'm not answering the phone. Um, He doesn't want us to, he wants us to be in eternity with him. He wants us to be in relationship with him. He wants us to worship him. He wants us to love on him. Love him, praise him, and everything, right? So that song by Patty LaBelle, I think it's called Good Attitude or New Attitude, whatever. God is giving us a new attitude. It had to be done all the tests, all the times where we thought that God was not there. And what is God doing? And why is it so hard? And I don't hear you, Lord. And you got me going through all these things because he had to build our character and he had to build our faith. And because not everybody in you know, take this back to the Lord because we're not all like in the same season. We're all in different seasons. So you could be in a wilderness season. You could be in an abundant season. You could be in a harvest season. But I know what God has told me, right? I know that I am going to be in a blessed season. The Lord is still blessing me even now. So he's providing. He's definitely providing. He's giving me a shelter over my head. He's giving me somewhere to lay my head. He's giving me like, he's so good. So... Where is it going with that God? I lost my train of thought. But, um, we are a new creature in Christ. And he's giving us a new mind. He's like giving us a new way of thinking. And I know, I believe it's in Romans. This isn't Romans, Lord. Where it says, do not conform to this, to the things of this world, but but be renewed by the renewing of your mind. Paraphrasing that completely, but you can Google it, whatever you want to do. It's in the word. And that's, I feel like that's what he's doing in this season even now. I don't understand why he's pulling me away from the group that I'm in, right? But he takes us from glory to glory. He's trying to do that even now because we go from glory to glory to glory, from faith to faith to faith, right? Like that's exactly what he's doing. And he has to stretch us out. He has to, there's other people that are waiting for me. Maybe my destiny helpers, maybe an assignment. I don't know what it is. Same for you. We cannot be around the same people for so, <sighs> Lord. Season, there is a season for everything. Like, the Lord will allow us to be in communion for a season and then he'll remove us because he's like, okay, time's up. You've done what you've done. Now it's time to move on to the next thing. Because if you're not growing where you are, there's a reason. And sometimes God allows us to like, just, we'll just like, it's like a, a, a what is it called, Lord? Like a, a growth spurt. Is that what it's called? Like a growth spurt? I don't remember. I don't even know what that means, but you have to grow where you are and not everybody is in the same is on the same level with Jesus and God help me I'm not trying to sound like I know it all and I have the best relationship with God I'm not saying that at all but I know my father's voice and I know how we speak to one another. I know how we communicate with one another. Like, I'm able to see when he's speaking. Like, just for example, like when I walked into the Airbnb, I was like, Lord, you are so good. Like, literally relax. And what does that say? Live in the moment. That's what he's telling me to do. Relax, Angie. Live in the moment, right? So, um, if this is resonating with you, then you know that it's for you. But take everything back to the Lord because you can be in a totally different season than what I'm in. But I'm just literally saying this to say, now I get it. Now I understand the obedience. Like, obedience is key, yes. And he's literally testing me and building up something in me as he's doing that. Does that make sense? Because, I mean, I say the night in my job, guys. At my job, 
you can't do that at every job. And I like, I had to badge myself in because like, how else am I going to get in there? Like, <laughs> spirit is really funny. Right <laughs> oh my gosh. I hope I'm making sense because I feel like I got the revelation and I was like, oh, I got to get on the record and, and share this. But we do not understand God's ways and God's thoughts. But I feel like for so many people, we are in a time where God is doing a wealth transfer. And he's giving us a new mind. He's giving us a new attitude. He's giving us a new image. Um, we are the image of God. We are the image of Christ. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We have to stand out as children of God. Right? So, uh, even like, for example, when I was telling you about like the group, I haven't actually removed myself from the group just yet. But um, the Lord has already confirmed. He's been confirming. But I did like mute my notifications and everything like that. So, I'm not able to get the notifications. Um... But I'm like, God, you're going to have to, like, show it to them. Like, show it to them. Like, I know what you're telling me. And they're understanding, but it's just, like, one. And he's he's awesome. He's a great brother in Christ. Like, we've been talking almost daily. But he just, like, I, I feel like he's not looking at it at a spiritual standpoint. Like, God, we cannot stay in kindergarten forever. We can't stay in the first grade forever. Like, forever. Like, we, when we're in school... We go from grade to grade to grade to grade to grade. It increases. First grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, five, fifth, sixth, seventh, whatever, you know, and then 12th grade. And then we graduate, right? So if you're, it's the same thing. Like, and I saw that in, in, a, in a YouTube video and it made so much sense the way the, with, with the way, I'm sorry guys, I'm trying to speak so loud. The way that the guy was explaining it, the way that the Lord was speaking through him. When you're around a group of people, I could be in the, I don't know, I'm just going to, put a number I could be in ninth grade with God and they could be in eighth grade or seventh grade or maybe even fifth grade I don't know but we cannot stay in the same grade we have to God wants us to increase he wants us to um take he Lord he wants to take us from glory to glory to glory to glory to faith to faith to faith like that's even in the word we cannot stay stagnant he does not want us to stay stagnant and so I had got that and I was like, okay, like I get it. So if this is for you, if you feel like you're in that season where God is really, really testing your, your, your faith and you're not understanding like why he's telling you to do this and why, because he wants us to be obedient because he wants to bless us. And if he can trust us with little, then he can trust us with more. I think that's how that, I think that's in the word somewhere. But um, this is why I don't like not having my Bible because I can literally just open the word and God will confirm through the word. But it's okay. Um, if it making if it's making sense, if it makes sense, like you have if you have eyes to see and ears to hear here. But I was just like, that's exactly what God is doing. He's giving me a new mindset. He wants me to know that he is the provider. I know he's a provider. Yes. But I feel like I'm still struggling just a little tad bit when it comes to like my finances. Finances. Yeah. And finances. I'm like, okay. That was a huge stretch of of faith that he did when it came to the apartment, guys. I don't know if I, if I told you guys. I barely had enough money. And I was like, God, you know that I have to have somewhere to stay and have the Ubers to get to work and everything. And when everything was said and done, I was like left with like negative something dollars in my checking account. And I believe I had maybe, maybe $50 in my cash app. And that was just like to get me back and forth to work. But then God provided. But I had to take that step. I had to take that step. And then I was like, I'm about to go sleep at the job, Lord. And I did. And I felt like I was losing my marbles. I felt like I was crazy. And like people don't understand. And and it's not for them to understand. That's, you know, God could be doing something in my life and doing something in your life. Completely two different things. Um, But if he's calling you, if you just feel that he's calling you away from a certain people... They might be believers. They might love Jesus, but God has to do something in you. He has, he wants to increase you. He wants you to grow in him even more. 
deeper, deeper depths of, of Jesus and for them too. Does that make sense? I hope I'm making sense. Um, what time is it? Because I'm supposed to have this. Oh, it's going to be 11 o'clock. Okay. Um, I hope I made sense, dad. I really, really do. I really, like, I really, really hope that I made sense because I get it now. I get it now. And like, man, I just know and feel like whenever the door, the door, the door, whenever the Lord opens up that door, whenever I do get my own apartment, I don't know why I feel this, but I feel like he's really going to give me revelation, like straight up revelation that I've never had before. Maybe on dreams that I've had in the past, maybe on visions I've had in the past, maybe on something that I've had in the past. And he's going to just bring all that revelation to me. That's just something I just feel. And I know that like sometimes the Lord will bless other people and he would have them like move out from their friends or their mom and dad or wherever they're staying with. And then they would like get their own place. And then God would literally just sit them down and just pour into them. And that's what happened with me when I first came to Christ. Um, I remember just, I was in the word all the time, all the time, all the time. That's when I began to know God for himself. And I was really like, that's when I learned my heavenly language and everything. And I was just praising and worshiping the Lord, but man, I just kind of feel like that's what's going to happen. I feel like it's just going to be like a, some kind of like, I don't know why I want to say floodgate, but I just feel like there's going to be a floodgate that's just going to open just nothing but revelation. And God is just going to do a new thing. He's going to do a new thing and you can't take everybody with you. You know what I mean? Like we can't take everybody with us. There's doors that we have to close. So if he's calling you away again, like I said, to remove yourself from a certain group, they might love Jesus and that's fine. But if God's saying to do it, then do it. Um, yeah, I hope I made sense, but I just wanted to get on and just share that with you guys. Cause I was like, that makes so much sense. Like. And then in that word, she was talking about, I think she was talking about the word or the color purple, maybe. And I believe the color purple means royalty. I believe. I could be wrong. But God had been showing me a lot of purple. Like purple, 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 purple. And like, we have to be set apart, guys. We have to be the light of this world. People will see Jesus in us. They see Jesus in us. They don't understand why we're not doing this and why we're not doing that. We're not like, they don't get it, but it's because we have God in us and, um, we are not to be judgmental. I think sometimes people think that I'm being judgmental and I'm not being judgmental. I'm just like. I know God and I know his voice. I know what he's saying. And like, I don't know why. I think I do know why. But lately, I kind of feel like God's been placing in my little circle. I don't want to say place in my circle, but like having me meet different people. And I'm like, they're not actually. Okay. How do I say this, Lord? It's not who they are. It's not who they are. It is It is Satan who is deceiving them. So I've been meeting a lot of people who have been gay, right? Men and women. And that's what I used to be. So, and I know, and I, I know that Satan's probably going to try to use that to get me back into going to that same sin. Maybe even liking another woman. No. No, 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 no. We, we, we are not going back to that. In Jesus' name, we're not going back to that. So I've been having like people that I've been meeting at work that just happen to be, they haven't told me, hey, I like this guy and he's a guy or I like this girl. And he's, like, no, but I can, I can tell. I just know. And I could just, you know, it's going to be a seed that I'm going to sow. 
It's going to be one word, maybe even a sentence, because there's this one guy that sits next to me at work. Um, he like, whenever Sophie is not there, he'll sit in her desk and he'll reserve it. And we sit next to one another. And, um, I talk to him. I'm not bashing him and like, oh, you're gay and God says you're going to go to hell and blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm not doing that because that's not of God at all. That is not of God at all. So I'll be on the phone and I'm talking to my members and I know that they can hear me talk. I know that he can hear me talking about the Lord. That's a seed planted in his heart, in his, in his heart. He hears it. You can't unhear Jesus, guys. You cannot unhear Jesus. So I don't know. That was just something that I feel like the Lord is, is, is kind of showing me, even like with the, with a couple that own these Airbnbs. How is it that I was at that one Airbnb, same couple, and then I just happened to see this one. It's a tiny home. That's what they're calling it, tiny homes. And it's the same couple. But God's just showing me favor with them. Like, so I I haven't been able to like, I mean, yeah, I talked to them like via the Airbnb um, thing I'm jigging. They're like letting me know what's available. And if you're available for this and I have an open avail availability for this and this and this. But um. God's gonna, I'm, I'm sure God's gonna do something in it. I'm sure he's gonna do something in it. Um, yesterday or the day before yesterday, I had someone shadow me. I'm all, now I'm just all over the place, but I had someone shadow me and she was talking about how she was living with somebody and the Lord will allow a conversation. Like he'll allow you to say something to open up that conversation, right? And I was talking about moving and then she was, she was like, yeah, I want to get out of the house that I'm at. Like, she was like, wherever she's staying, whoever she's staying with, they're very, they're very religious, right? And she was talking about how they don't eat pork and they don't eat this and they don't eat that and they don't do these things. And I was like, I didn't even get to speak on it because I, I had to be on the phone or whatever. But I was just like letting her talk. And I was like, wow, God, like, the, what? And... I don't know. God is just allowing me to see so many different things in the members. Um, this one lady didn't want to take a phone call because she said it was a Sabbath day. And nothing wrong with that. Like, God might call you to not ever be on the phone. Like, not be on the phone on a Sunday or something. You know what I mean? But, like, don't make it about rules and regulations. Because God is a God of relationship. He's not religion. So, and I'm not saying that... He won't tell you like the Sabbath day could be any day. It doesn't have to be on a Sunday. It could be any day, any day of the week you can pick. I feel like today's my Sabbath day because um, it's a day of rest and I'm off today. So, um, I'm not saying that God's going to be like, don't ever be on the phone on Sunday or Monday or whatever. Like, I don't know. He might, he might tell you, Hey, like just chill. And it's the way that it's the way that people, the way that they say it. Like, God can tell me today, don't get on YouTube for the rest of the day. Okay, got it. Right? But, God's not going to tell me, Lord, help me. God's not going to tell me, don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, I think because that member, the way I saw it in the notes, because I saw the notes on the account, and it said, the member said she cannot talk on the phone on the Sabbath day. To me, I just took it like, why would God tell you not to pick up the phone on the Sabbath day? Like, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Maybe I'm not making sense. Maybe I'm making sense. Holy Spirit is really upon me right now. But I pray that I made sense, Father, please. <laughs> because I don't want... God is not a God of regulations and rules. It's relationship. And if he tells you, hey... um, just put the phone down for the day. That's cool, you know? Um, but I think I took it like, wow, she can't be on the phone all day on um, on Sunday. And I remember like, even now I'm thinking about it. There was um, Law and Order that I would watch. I, I watched Law and Order Criminal Tent and there was like some Jews and there was somebody who was murdered, right? There was somebody that was laying on the, they were murdered and they didn't know what to do. And one of them was like, we should call the police. And the other one was like, no, it's a Sabbath day. We can't do that. 
We can't, we can't, we cannot do that. No, God is going to want you to, so you're telling me that if you see somebody on the street laying down on the ground that needs help or maybe is dead, you're saying that God is going to tell you to leave that person just dead on the street and not call the police and just go home and mind your business? No, he's not going to tell you that. You're going to want to have to call, you're going to want to call the cops. You know what I mean? So I think that's where I'm trying to get my point across. Um, that's religion. God's not religion. He's relationship. It's just like having a brother and a sister, a friend and a friend relationship. That's exactly what it is with me and Jesus. That's exactly what it is with me and the father. That's exactly what it is with me and the Holy Spirit. I know when he speaks to me, I know what he says. People might not understand it. People are be like, oh, well, that was just a coincidence. No, it was not a coincidence. I know what God said. So I'm getting on here just to say that like, <laughs> I felt like I got revelation on what God is doing in this hour, not just for me, but for so many people, but, um, you have to, there's a lot of people that still are not walking in their purpose. You have to walk in purpose and, and get to know God for himself. And that way you can know your purpose, what your what your calling on your life is that he has for you. Um, Man, oh gosh, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Woo. Um, I look like Rudolph, don't I? It's okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to get up off here. I need to finish my mascara. Maybe put on some red lipstick. I don't know. But, whew, guys, I pray that I made sense. I really, really do. But what I got from that was like, God is really teaching me how to trust him in every area of my life. And when I keep seeing my name, he's highlighting my name. I just feel like, I don't know, my name might be up in a room that I don't know about. My name might be highlighted to somebody, a certain person. I, I don't know. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Just thinking about something. Because the Lord. So... I know that I know that I know God, like I know that the Lord give, has given me my name, my name, the name of my God or Dane's spouse. Like I just know that that's the name. Like I could not make up the stuff that I was praying about to him in my mind, in my head, in my heart. He gave to me and he's given me the name. And so now with, now that I'm just saying that my name is just being highlighted, maybe he's just letting me know that that person knows my name too. I don't know. That just came to me. So I could be wrong. I don't know why the Lord's highlighted my name. That that could be it. But guys, I just want to get on and share that with you guys. If you know that you are in a season of harvest and a season of blessings, take it. You know what I mean? But we are all in different seasons. Do not take it um, because people can just be like, oh, I'm in a blessed season. And they're watching all these words and then that thing does not come to pass because they're receiving something that's not even theirs. Every time I get on a YouTube or something like that, majority of the time, guys, it is confirmation. Majority of the time is confirmation for me. And it should be confirmation for you when you see something, whether it's on marriage or whether it's on a blessed season, whether it's on like, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is that the Lord, you and the Lord are speaking about or having that intimate moment with, excuse me, in private, it should be confirmation for you. And that's what he has us here for, to, excuse me, to confirm things for his people. Because not even the church, sometimes all these churches are not even doing what the Lord has called them to do. And sometimes they don't even have the relationship that we have with God, which is horrible to say. But it's the truth. Um, so, yeah. 
I hope that made sense again. But I'm going to get up off here, guys. I've been here for 30 minutes. Um, I love you guys. God loves you so much more. I'm sorry that I do not have a love letter to read to you guys. My Bible is at work. All of my Bibles are at work. And I can't believe I didn't bring it with me. But it's okay because I, I mean, I need the word. I need the word. I am not saying I do not need the word because God knows my heart and he knows I left it at work by accident. He knows I didn't do it on purpose. Um, But he's still speaking throughout the day. Throughout me being in this room, he is still speaking to me. And I just can't wait to get in the word though. I just can't wait to open up my Bible and just, yeah. But I love you guys. God loves you so much more. I know I was all over the place and I know I would kept itching, but that was, that, that's when Holy Spirit is upon me. Like my, it'll itch just like right here. Sometimes my cheeks will actually itch and like right here, but majority of the time it's just like my nose. And so just want to throw that out there in case you're new to my channel. Um, Holy Spirit is upon me and my face will start itching just right about here. And I can't even explain like the feeling. It's like little, like little tingles. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm not the only one that has that. It's me and my other sister in Christ, like we both have it. And I know like a, another person has it too. And I believe wholeheartedly there is people that when the Holy Spirit is upon them, they'll face the issue, but they don't realize it because I will see them like go like this a lot. But they don't say nothing. I'm like, girl, that's Holy Spirit upon you. <laughs> uh, or a bro, like brother, like I don't know. But um, anyways, I love you guys. I'm going to get up off here. God loves you so much more. I'm going to try the, try the, try to enjoy this day. Uh, I've been trying to order like some groceries, like a little bit of groceries because I have a kitchen and I can like make me some stuff instead of me having to eat out, eat out, eat out or just overeat or so whatever the case. Um, but I never checked out. <laughs> So it is what it is. Um, I am praying because I need a new suitcase. Guys, I have a flat tire on this suitcase over here. Did I tell y'all that? It is flat. It's not even rolling anymore. So I'm like, Lord, I really need a new suitcase. Can I please get a new suitcase? Like, please. I know he'll allow me to get it, but I feel like I'm just kind of like, okay, I got to save for this, Lord. I got to save for this. And God's like, girl, if you don't let go of those finances. Okay, daddy. Okay, I get it. I get it. So, um, yeah, I got a flat tire. <laughs> I was trying to drag it at work because we have carpet, of course, in the job. And I was like, this thing ain't going nowhere. <laughs> that suitcase has been through some things. I have had that suitcase since I met God, since I moved to California. I've had that suitcase. That is crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I've had it for years now. And I think it's time to let it go. You know that movie? Is it Frozen? Where she's like, let it go. Let it go. I think it's time to let go of that. And get something new. Because I'm walking into a new season. Yes. I'm walking into a new season. And so I cannot take the things of the old into the things of the new. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to sound cocky or nothing like that. But I know what I have been through. I know what God has told me. I know what he's taught me. I know the trials. I know the test. I've been in the car. I've been at the job. I've been in a hotel with a whole drunk. I've been in that Airbnb with a whole another person who was a drunk as well and didn't even know it. And I thought it was my husband. I done got tricked so many times. I just let my flesh and my heart deceive me. Guys, your heart can deceive you. Your heart can deceive you. And I do not want to be deceived anymore in Jesus' name. I don't want any kind of counterfeit, nothing. And I was so set in stone that that man was my husband. But but you know what, guys? Even like thinking back now, I still was on God friend, but now I'm starting to ramble. Um, there was moments that we had that I felt the presence of God. You know, like for example, I think we were just laying in bed one day and I was just kind of like hovering over him and I just felt God so strongly in that moment and I started to cry because I felt God's presence and I was like oh my gosh and I was like God is with us God is with us but now I'm thinking about it that's the moment where that's how it's going to be when God brings my husband that's how it's going to be when God brings that union together that no man can separate. That's, I got that revelation. Like, I was like, oh, okay. There was even another moment where like the Lord was ministering to me about like it being 
Saul to Paul. He's going to have that moment. And I was thinking it was Tom at that time, but God will use anything. And I was like, I, I was thinking like it was Tom, but no, it's not. It's going to, I pray that he does have an encounter with Jesus and he does meet the love of his life because he's just so lonely that he feels like he needs somebody to love on him to be complete. And you can't have a life complete without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit living in you and showing you what love is, who love is. God. God is love. It comes from the Father first. If we're not abiding in Him and Him in us, how can we love other people? Where is your fruit, guys? Where is the fruit of the Spirit? So... Um, God was just showing me like, that's, that's, that's what it's going to be about when it comes to the, um, you know, the marriages. I'm not one to talk about marriages and, and all that stuff, but God has been highlighting so much marriage words. And I'm like, I don't want to watch this God, unless sister does it, then I'll watch it. <laughs> but he will show me somebody else that's talking about the same thing in a different way. And I'm like, okay, Lord, but I, you know, I just try to be careful when I watch those things because I'm not, I don't want to idolize no marriage. I don't want to idolize that, but I know what God's saying. And, um, yeah. Okay. For real, I'm getting up off here. I love you guys. Jesus loves you so much more. And I pray that y'all have a wonderful Wednesday. It is Wednesday. It is hump day. Oh, Lord Jesus. Um. Yeah, no love letter today, guys. Sorry. Um, but you can, I don't even know, guys. You can read. Um, I don't even know what verse it is, guys. I don't even know. I need to charge my laptop now I'm thinking about it. Charge my laptop. Um, there was a verse of the day yesterday. I think it was Lamentations something. But at the end of that, it was talking about how God's mercies are new every morning. I don't know. I'll probably link something in the description box to give you um, scripture. But I really do need to get up off here and get ready. And I made coffee. Is it still warm? It's actually still warm. And I never. I'm telling you. Look. Look. I'm about to show y'all. I don't. I make a whole cup of coffee. And I don't drink it. Mm. It's cold now. But, uh, yeah, 37 minutes, 37 minutes. Okay. Okay, dad, I'm getting off. I love you guys. Bye.